why is STAD squid? In this video we're going to find out what are density plots and how to interpret them. So if you're ready, let's dive in. Okay, so you might have seen a lot of plots like this one, or this one, or this one. These are density plots and they're a great way to visualize the distribution of continuous variables. For example, we might want to visualize the distribution of the expression levels of a particular gene, TP53, across the cells of this tumor sample. For each cell, we have a value, which is the transcript counts of TP53. If we divide the counts in each cell by the total number of counts across all cells in the sample, we get relative frequencies. So now let's plot the relative frequencies of the different expression levels in the sample to get a histogram, like this one. The x-axis shows the data value, TP53 expression, and the y-axis shows the relative frequency. For example, the value 40 occurs 12 times out of 30 total values in the data set, so it has a relative frequency of 40% or 0.4. Now we can plot a density curve over the histogram to capture the shape of the distribution. You see we have a peak at 40 since that is our most frequent value and also a little bump at 38 and 42. So essentially a density curve is a great way to get a nice overview of the distribution of all the values in our data. Let's have a look at six steps on how to interpret a density plot. First of all, the shape. The shape of the density curve it tells you a lot about the distribution of your data. The curve can be symmetric, which means the data is evenly distributed around the central value with similar frequencies of observations on both sides. If it's not symmetric, then it's skewed. Skewed curves are asymmetrical with the tail extending more to one side than the other. Positive skewedness, also called right skewed, means that the tail extends to the right, while negative skewedness, left skewed, means that the tail extends to the left. A curve can also be unimodal if it has only one peak, bimodal if it has two, or multimodal. Multiple peaks indicate that the data contains distinct subgroups or clusters, usually. For example, in our cancer tissue, we might have three clusters of cells based on TP53 expression. Cells with very little TP53 expression, maybe they have a deletion and lost one of the copies. Cells with normal expression levels and cells that perhaps duplicated their DNA and have an overexpression of TP53. So we can identify three distinct peaks of TP53 expression. Nice. Second point to consider is the central tendency. The central tendency of a distribution is just a fancy way of saying the mode or the most frequent value. And we know already that this is represented by the peak or, or peaks in our density distribution. Next, variability. A density distribution can tell us a lot about the spread or variability of the distribution. For that, we must look at the width of the density curve. A wider curve indicates greater variability, while a narrower curve suggests less variability. Number four is the tails. The tails of the density curve represent the probabilities of extreme values, also called outliers. Longer tails indicate a greater probability of observing extreme values in the data set. For example, in this curve, there is one or two outliers that are making the curve right skewed. There is a long tail. So maybe it would be a good idea to have a look at those values a bit more closely. Sometimes it's a good quality check. For example, we might realize that there are two cells in our data set that had crazy measurements of TP53 because of a sequencing error. If this is a single cell experiment, we might be measuring the expression levels of two cells or doublets instead of just one. So we might need to discard these two cells from our analysis. 
So um, density distributions are also great to, uh, for spotting outliers. Number five, this is a bit more intu uh, less intuitive, but the area under the curve within a specific interval of the x-axis represents the probability of observing values within that interval. Let's, let's give an example. For example, the probability of observing um, TP53 expression value lower than 41 is the area in pink which is around 0.7 or 70%. The probability of observing a value between 40 and 41 is around 19%. This means that the area under the curve always adds up to 100%, or one if we're talking about relative frequencies, and that the curve will never go under the x-axis because um, frequencies and probabilities can never be under zero. Okay, and lastly, number six, comparison. Density curves can also be used to compare distributions between different groups or conditions. By overlaying multiple density curves on the same plot, you can visually check for differences in shape, central tendency, and variability between groups. For example, we could compare the expression levels of cells in normal tissue and cells in cancer tissue. In summary, density plots are a powerful tool for visualizing the distribution of continuous variables, offering insights into the shape, spread, and central tendency of the data. And that is it for today. Squid-tastic. Before you go, make sure to check out the new section of bioinformatic tools and resources in bios.squid.com, where you can find interesting web pages, other blogs, tutorials that I found uh, useful. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate your feedback. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. Have a squid-tastic day and see you in the next one.